greetings to those here present and those joining us online for this view on Africa from the Institute for Security Studies here in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. My name is Ndubisi Kristen Ani, a researcher focusing on security threats on the African continent and assessing international responses. Now you will see that in recent months, there has been a spike in Boko Haram attacks across the Lake Chad region. This is despite the claims that the group has been degraded. Now, however, these attacks are not random. They follow the ideological standpoints of the two groups that now make up what we now know as Boko Haram. And the international community needs to take note and respond to those in a comprehensive and informed manner. This view on Africa draws from two recent ISS reports on factional dynamics within Boko Haram and the regional responses. It draws out of ISS extensive field research across the four countries of the Lake Chad region. More than 120 interviews were conducted, including affected individuals in the Lake Chad Basin area. I will structure the presentation as follows. Firstly, I will discuss the fragmentation of Boko Haram, the distinct attack patterns, and the threat to the region. Secondly, I will discuss the regional responses and the impact on civilian livelihood. Now, a brief background to the fragmentation. In August 2016, Boko Haram split into two distinct jihadist movements, one led by one called ISIS West Africa, led by Abu Musab al banawi and the other led by the long-term leader Abu Bakr Shekau. Now, the official split happened when the Islamic State crowned al banawi as the new leader of the Islamic State West Africa. This is in spite of the Abu Bakr Shekau, who is the long-term leader of Boko Haram. He indeed uh, was the first to declare uh, Boko Haram's allegiance to the Islamic State in March 2015. Now, Shekau rejected his demotion and continued to uh, command loyal subjects um, in his faction. Now, the cause of the split revolves around three main reasons. Now, the first one is Shekau's leadership style. Now, a group of commanders were fed up with Shekau's uh, authoritarian leadership and indiscriminate killings of commanders that, that refused to follow his dictates. And then they were also concerned that Shekau lived in luxury and comfort while um, Boko Haram members suffered and were starving at some point. Now, secondly, the split also happened when uh, Boko Haram needed a revival at a time of decline. Now, Mama Nu, who is actually a driving force behind the ISIS West Africa, a prominent figure for that matter, criticized uh, Shekau's leadership, saying that under Shekau's leadership, the government took back territories and that they were losing the war. So Nu and his associates sought to change that, uh, that, that circumstances by pursuing fresh um, approach and attack patterns. Now, the third most important aspect of the disagreement uh, that led to the division is the attack against uh, Muslim civilians. Now, for Shekau's Boko Haram, every local population that is not under his caliphate is an enemy and subject to attack. Now, for Mamanu and Banawi's associate, they reject such blanket targeting of poorly defended uh, civilians in, in, in remote areas. ISIS West Africa really recently released a book uh, called uh, The Islamic State West Africa Province and versus Abu Bakr Shekau. Here they explain why it is erroneous in their view to undertake indiscriminate ac attacks against uh, Muslim civilians on the basis that they are outside uh, his caliphate. Now you see that these distinct uh, ideological stands are well translated into the attack patterns of the two groups. 
Now, while Sheikh House Boko Haram continued the punitive and indiscriminate attacks against civilians through suicide um, attacks, uh, ISIS West Africa focuses on uh, security forces, focuses on carrying out well-planned and targeted attacks against security uh, uh, forces. Now you see that uh, attacks such as those that happened in the, in Iran and also do, uh, the recent cases in uh, Jakana and in Jili village of uh, Gadam all show uh, um, the, the, the significant and the impact of ISIS West Africa's patterns of attack. And those are carried out deliberately on the, on like uh, Shekau's attack that are sometimes um, undertaken uh, by chance against uh, security forces. So while the attacks of uh, ISIS West Africa is less frequent, the attack is meant to degrade security forces and reinforce its own strength. Now, what makes it more potent is that the relationship with civilian population further enhance their view in communities, thereby making them long-term threats. Now, ISS spoke to a number of local population in the Lake Chad area, and they told us that if you encounter Shekau's Boko Haram, there are no negotiations with them, just killing. But if it's Shekau's, uh, if it's ISIS West Africa's faction that you encounter, they will let you go. There are higher chances of you being let go. They will only look for security forces um, in, if you're going in a vehicle, they look for security forces and they even uh, advise you to run if you see uh, the Shekau factions with their black turbans. So this makes them uh, more uh, uh, endearing to the civilian population to some extent than uh, the Shekau's faction. But there are nuances, however. One, Shekau's uh, Boko Haram do carry out some attacks against military structures, but this is, however, different from ISIS West Africa's focus on carrying out attacks against military and security uh, structures. Now you see that um, Shekau once uh, recently attacked a con military convoy in Bama, and those are opportunities uh, attacks uh, in, in some situations, but the attack by ISIS West Africa are well targeted and carried out at the military bases of, um, of security uh, forces. Now this makes it quite distinct, distinct in terms of uh, the attack carried out by Shekau's factions. Now, you see that uh, ISIS West Africa also, however, in the nuanced uh, nuance, uh, perspective, also carries out extreme violence against civilians uh, who do not follow its uh, stipulations, such as the request for food or request for information about um, uh, security forces. Now, ISIS West Africa has also deployed uh, suicide bombers, but these are often uh, male suicide bombers. This is unlike um, the Shekau's Boko Haram deployment of female uh, uh, suicide bombers against civilians. Uh, ISIS West Africa carry out those against military structures, which at times, uh, together with the IEDs that it plans, sometimes affect uh, the civilian uh, population. Now, and it, uh, militants also extort local populations uh, through taxes, and you see that respondent, uh, respondents from Magumeri in Borno State, Nigeria, told um, Institute for Security Studies researchers that ISIS West Africa sometimes pay daily visits to them requesting for food. Similarly, in Cameroon, interviewees told us that ISIS West Africa uh, placed taxes on business activities, and the group demanded their taxes collaboration upon the penalty of death. Now you see that in this situation, most often, the civilians are caught in the middle. That is between cooperating with ISIS West Africa and being questioned by military forces on the one hand, or cooperating with security forces and being uh, dealt ruthlessly by uh, the Boko Haram.
which uh, often in the case, the choices often tilt towards uh, that of paying allegiance or paying, uh, respecting or cooperating with the, uh, with the demands of the militants um, over the demands of the military forces. But this does not mean that they cooperate or they are in support of, the, of, of, of militancy. Now, nonetheless, the ISIS West Africa's treatment is often more humane than that of uh, Shekau's uh, uh, faction. And many respons uh, respondents that we spoke to, especially in the Damboa region of uh, Borno State, told us that ISIS West Africa sometimes buys food from them, um, even if it's not at the same market value, but they do buy those goods. And then secondly, ISIS West Africa sometimes apologize when they take goods from you forcefully. So this distinguishes them from the Shekau faction that carries out indiscriminate attacks against uh, civilians. Now, such a kind of a different pattern of attack and effort to uh, mend relationship with civilians raises concerns about its future support among local population and also raises uh, concerns about the long-term threat that will be posed by ISIS West Africa. It is uh, unclear that uh, this strategy will ultimately work for ISIS West Africa, but you will see that um, this is because local population that we spoke to say that they do not provide any superior services or governance uh, and that they do not trust it um, because of how Boko Haram or Shekau's uh, Boko Haram started initially. And also, but you'll see that uh, the ideology perpetrated or uh, being shared by ISIS West Africa is sometimes favorable to the younger generation. Now, ISIS West Africa in Chad, for instance, often portray the government itself as the protectors against the excesses of local chiefs and security agents. They often cite the extortions, the fines, and the arbitrary arrests by security forces, which they are there to correct. And for them, they're taking advantage of the discontent on both sides to present themselves as an alternative uh, perspective. But now you also see that uh, ISIS West Africa sometimes carry out negotiations with uh, government and it's often based on uh, civilian matters. So now, for instance, like the case in Dapchi, uh, the, 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 there are claims that the government has backdoor uh, channels of negotiation with ISIS West Africa. And its capacity, ISIS West Africa capacity to generate local resources also makes it uh, more resilient to the claims of uh, degradation of Islamic State in um, the Middle East. So this makes uh, ISIS West Africa a more long-term threat than that of uh, Shekau's faction that has continued to alienate itself from the civilian population um, over the years. Now there are questions of cooperation, geographical location of the two fa uh, uh, factions. There are also questions about the potential of other groups. Now after the split, ISIS West Africa and Shekau's Boko Haram could compete, uh, co uh, the, uh, could compete co co cooperate and sometimes cohabitate. But the dominant um, approach here that they have taken is to cohabitate with geography serving as a buffer. Now, you will note that uh, Shekau's faction is more dominant around the south-central south Borno state, and um, it's also around the area of the Zambisa forest and the border with Cameroon. And then ISIS West Africa initially had a strong hold in northern Borno and Lake Chad, but has since expand, expanded further south um, to areas north and west of Damboa and Yobe State around Boniadi. So both uh, factions are dominant in, uh, uh, present in Cameroon, but uh, areas of uh, Chad and Niger are dominated by ISIS West Africa faction. But you see that cells from both factions are present uh, in other areas as well, which thereby complicates the picture on the ground. There are also claims that there are groups that are not aligned to the two factions. 
but there has no been any actor that has um, uh, uh, de uh, declared a separate entity um, as at yet. So overall dynamics remain heavily influenced by the ISIS West Africa and Shekau's Boko Haram dichotomy. So this are the clear, distinct and um, attack patterns of um, ISIS West Africa and Shekau's Boko Haram. Now the responses of the regional governments in the Lake Chad area have been predominantly uh, security focus and military in nature. Now this comes with limited consideration about the humanitarian consequences and the long-term threat uh, that it, on uh, long-term impact on counterterrorism. This has had significant impact on civilian livelihoods. So you see the government of the Lake Chad area uh, bringing restrictions on movement of people and goods as well as trade in affected areas. So while these restrictions are meant to improve security, most of the civilians that spoke to ISS say that they are affected negatively by the security res restrictions. This is irrespective of the purpose. Now, the, alt um, the absence of alternative uh, support to civilians further enhance the unease among civilians. And the, the need to win their hearts and minds and uh, civilians is very crucial because Boko Haram recruits from amongst them and also thrives from amongst them. Now, even members of the Civilian Joint Tax Force uh, in Borno State complained to us saying that they do not have funds to operate and that, uh, that they do not have training or support from the government. Now, the failure to ease the suffering of civilians and also such kind of uh, concerns from um, its partners, the, the Civilian Joint Task Force, now uh, plays into the hands of the violent extremists, allowing them to portray the government as making life more difficult for civilians. Uh, is civilians and those we spoke to actually told us that it is better to join Boko Haram and enjoy the gains than to die uh, in hunger. So in conclusion, here are four takeaways and their accompanied recommendations. Firstly, ISIS West Africa's dominant attack profile is designed to weaken security forces and to increase its own strength. This is unlike uh, Shekau's Boko Haram uh, uh, attacks against civilians uh, that often uh, decreases its own strength uh, and its own human resources. But however, Shekau's Boko Haram remains um, capable of carrying out ho um, horrific violence and it should not be ignored. Now, the, two recommend the recommendation for these two takeaways is that the government and the international community and the regional organizations have to develop uh, strategies that target the two factions. Now, the the government and also the international community has to work with civil society organizations to develop alternative narrative, um, especially those ones that uh, by ISIS West Africa, which seems to exonerate itself from the attacks by uh, Shekau, which tends to affect civilian population. Now, the government of the Lake Chad Basin also need to avoid blanket stigmatization of the local communities living in areas of militant influence. So in situations where the military is unable to provide total protection, uh, civilians often play, uh, rely on the rules that are being given by the terror groups. Yet that does not mean that the civilians in such areas support militancy. The government has to improve its, uh, its, its visibility within those regions. Now, the third takeaway is that ISIS West Africa is more likely to receive external support, although evidence of this has been limited. This is because ISIS West Africa, including Shekau's uh, Boko Haram, often receives support from the local population, and the, this, this has made them more resilient despite the weakening of the Islamic State. So the international community has to provide support to regional governments in terms of cutting Boko Haram sources of funding at the local level and also at the uh, and blo also blocking the um, possibilities of external support to the group.
Now, the fourth takeaway is that regional responses has predominantly been military in nature. Although efforts are on the way for non-military responses, such as the recent effort to develop a regional stabilization strategy against violent extremism in the Lake Chad area. Hence, it is key to complement those military responses with humanitarian responses, including easing of security restrictions, which impact on civilian livelihoods. After all, it's the local population that, uh, that the government needs to win their hearts and minds to avoid future, to prevent future uh, insurgency and also to counter the current insurgency. Now, thank you for listening. And to end our discussion, the two comprehensive publications on these dynamics are on ISS website, detailing the factional dynamics and the command structure, the regional responses, and the impact of civilian livelihoods in the lecture basin. Thank you.